Yesterday, someone said to me, so you quit your job to go to grad school just so you could graduate and then go work for that same job again? Yeah, I know, that sounds kind of intuitive. And trust me, I have questioned this decision so many times in the last couple of months. And now that I have completed my first semester and I am now halfway through my master's degree, I now have a little more clarity about why I did it. And so I thought I'd share more about what I've learned so far on this journey. I'm currently at a market fair in Seattle, so I think it'll be fun. This is one of the only quiet places I could find to film, so bear with me. So one of the things I learned is that things ramp up pretty quickly, and the first few weeks were simple introductory concepts, and by the time we got to week five, we were doing more detailed topics. And I was skipping classes to go skiing, I had fallen behind in classes by midterms, and I had to rush to catch up by finals. For instance, I would choose not to do some reading on asynchronous JavaScript because I've been doing it for so long at my job professionally that I see no reason to like do the readings. But it's important to know that even though I may have some experience uh, in the lectures, I am in no way an expert in the topics and I still need to put in the time to learn as everybody else. And no matter how much I know about the topic, I'm still gonna learn something new about the course materials. So that's something I'm gonna try to change next semester. And next up is priorities. It's good to have priorities. So my priorities were to get a brand name advanced degree, meet some people, and generally get some time off to start a startup. So the marginal benefit of getting an advanced degree at this time, based on my career trajectory as a software engineer, is very minimal. However, the marginal benefit of getting an advanced degree from Carnegie Mellon, which is the number one computer science school in the world, could be invaluable. And I think people still underestimate the value of a brand name school on your resume. But brand names, uh, whether it's FANG or a top school, can really help give you a professional boost. Uh, it's sad that our society is this way, but that's just the way it is. And if you have the opportunity to get a brand name on your resume, you should seriously consider it. So during this semester, I would focus on my priorities like building a startup and networking. And of course that would hurt my grades, but getting the best grades uh, was not my priority. So I had to deal with the trade-off. So whatever your priorities are, uh, it's better to like set them at the start and focus on them. Let's talk about imposter syndrome. So I am taking an accelerated course load, which means that I'm taking more classes than the recommended full-time course load. On top of that, I'm handling YouTube, startup work, and like professional work. And so I may not give my 100% to the classes. And that means that I may not be the professor's favorite student. I may not be the most active team member, but that's okay. And how I deal with that is I realize that I have like earned my spot in a room full of smart people. And because I've earned my spot, then I, uh, I belong there. So that's how I deal with it. This is the most important lesson I learned this semester. There is great advantage of interacting and networking with the people around you. You know, there's a popular saying that goes like this, your network is your net worth. And that is very much true. You know, the people you meet in school are likely to have some of the biggest impacts in your life. And those people have already been through a very good filter it's not like you're going around looking for people to network with. The university has done a great job at filtering the best people in your field and putting all of them in one room. Everyone around you in grad school is a rock star. You just gotta look around. Some of the people who have had the biggest impacts in my life in general and in the past couple of months have been people that I have networked with or got introduced to by a common network 
I am lucky to be in the Silicon Valley campus, and I take advantage of the events in the Valley, whether it's CMU affiliated or not, and that has been super helpful for me. Finally, let's talk about academics. So I put it last because I think it's the least relevant for this video. Because you can learn this stuff anywhere. You don't have to go to grad school for it. My courses this semester were mostly around software verification practices. Think of static analysis and model checking. And I also learned about standard software engineering practices in my foundations of software engineering class. I frankly did not learn a lot from this class because it was just a reiteration of the things I already do at my work. And then I did engineering economics and decision analysis. Basically, this class helps you make decisions as a software engineer, like economically viable decisions, like analyzing whether or not to do feature X or feature Y based on some available data, leveraging concepts like null hypothesis, utility theory, Monte Carlo simulation, and others. Let me know if you want me to make a detailed video about my classes. It's important to note that this video is about my individual experience and it is not representative of the overall CMU grad experience. And experiences can be different on a case-by-case -case basis. So I think I'm going to end this video here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, like the video for the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!